Hi, welcome back to the Demalak Cookery channel. So it's going to be a really quick video today. I'm making char siu pork or Chinese barbecue pork. Okay, so this is another uh, recipe which has been given to me by a working chef from a Chinese restaurant. Not the same chef as the previous four or five uh, videos on the YouTube channel, but this is a really, really good recipe. The spice blend we're going to be using from the Damalat range is their Chinese salt and pepper seasoning. Now, if you can't get access to the Damalat range of products, then substitute the Damalat Chinese salt and pepper seasoning for a teaspoon of ground star anise. If you can't get hold of ground star anise, then a very good quality fire spice powder, but you ha you're actually going to need more if you're using a fire spice powder because it has a lot of fillers uh, within that type of uh, spice blend. So whereas we use a teaspoon of Chinese salt and pepper seasoning or a teaspoon of ground star anise, you'll need two teaspoons of a decent quality fire spice powder. The other thing regarding this recipe is the cut of meat that we're going to use. So we're actually going to use uh, a pork fillet for this particular recipe. But the chef was telling me from this particular Chinese uh, restaurant chain that they would normally use pork shoulder for this recipe. However, in the last six months, as this pandemic uh, just seems to continue on and on, they're finding it more and more difficult to get good quality meat coming through. And they've seen that pork shoulder especially has become um, very inferior compared to what they were buying before. So they've actually moved from uh, pork shoulder over to pork fillet. And I'm sure as things hopefully improve through the country with the supply chain, they'll move back to pork shoulder. So I'm using pork fillet. If you can find really decent pork shoulder, then use that instead. As usual, a full list of ingredients will be given at the end of the video, so let's have a look at those ingredients now and anything else we're going to need for today. So the ingredients for today's recipe, as I said, I'm using pork fillet. Uh, I've got 700 grams of pork fillet. The most convenient place within the UK I could find uh, pork fillet, obviously that was readily available, was Aldi stores. Um, but as I said before, if you can find some decent pork shoulder, then use that instead teaspoon of ginger garlic paste. Going to be using about half a teaspoon of dark soy sauce, a tablespoon of light soy sauce, two tablespoons of dry white wine, three tablespoons of hoisin sauce, and this brand is Lee Kun Ki, but obviously you can use whatever brand you like. A teaspoon of Damalat Chinese salt and pepper seasoning three tablespoons of honey. Going to be using just less than half a teaspoon of red food coloring. Obviously this is optional, but of all of the Chinese restaurants and takeaways I visit in the UK, I don't know one that doesn't use red food coloring for this particular recipe. That's the ingredients for the marinade. I'm also using two teaspoons of sugar I'm going to add some water to that and that's going to be used for the glaze right at the very end. So the first thing we want to do is to mix our marinade ingredients together. So in the bowl I've already got the three tablespoons of honey, three tablespoons of hoisin sauce. I'm going to add in our ginger and garlic paste. A teaspoon of Chinese salt and pepper seasoning. soy sauce. Just be very, very sparing with that. It does work very well at 
colouring the uh, recipe. So the reason they put dark soy sauce, because I asked why do you put dark soy sauce in this particular recipe, because obviously it's, um, I always see it as being a, a red colour, is they like this particular restaurant chain like a, like a darker red, because they say anything lighter than that just kind of just looks a bit false. So our dry white wine. Our light soy sauce. Our red food coloring. So what I'm going to do now is just blend all of this together. So once we've blended everything together, it should look like that. And the next thing to do is obviously coat our pork fillet. So we've got our pork fillet into a bowl. I'm now going to use half of our marinade and just make sure that the pork fillet is coated on all sides. I'm then going to place cling film or food wrap over the top of the bowl and we are going to marinate the pork fillet for at least 12 hours. So in this case, I'm going to be doing this overnight. Also going to be placing cling film or food wrap over the uh, marinade bowl and we're going to reserve that in the fridge again overnight. The reason for that is we want that marinade to soak into the meat, which is great and create that uh, ring, that, that dark red ring around the um, pork and give it plenty of flavour but halfway through the cooking process tomorrow I'm also going to use the rest of the marinade to baste the pork fillet. Again it enhances not just the flavour but the, uh, the look of the pork as well. So as I said I'm going to cover this now, that pork fillet fully in the marinade, cling film over the top and place both of these bowls into the fridge overnight. Okay, so this pork has been marinating now overnight. You will see some liquid uh, coming out of the pork, uh, especially if you've marinated it over a long period of time. The next thing to do, I've placed the oven on at 180 degrees centigrade, 180. It's really important that, that oven gets up to temperature before the pork goes in. I've got a baking tray with a rack and we're just going to transfer this pork now onto the rack. Next thing we're going to do, take some of our basting sauce which we've got left over, just going to run over um, the top side of the uh, pork, then that's going to go into that preheated oven, into the middle of the oven initially for 30 minutes and then we'll come back to it and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so after 30 minutes, we take the marinade that we've got left over and coat it on both sides. Turn it over. Right, so this is a 700 gram piece of pork. So this is going to go back in that oven for another roughly about 30 minutes, maybe slightly less. So if you're 
cooking with either bigger or smaller pieces of pork then obviously adjust your cooking times accordingly so we want the pork obviously to be cooked all the way through but we do want it to be nice and uh, succulent so it's important we don't overcook it and dry it out so as I said back into this oven for with this piece, piece of pork for approximately 30 minutes so just before the pork comes out of the oven just going to put a sugar glaze on top so this isn't something i would normally do but the particular restaurant that i got the recipe from they do it so if they do it i'm doing it so our two teaspoons of sugar which i showed at the start of the video uh, in the ingredients list just going to add just a little bit of warm water from the kettle and we just want to mix that in until the sugar has dissolved. So we're just going to go over this pork with that sugar glaze and then back into the oven just for two or three minutes and that is the char siu pork done. This glaze by the way won't do a great deal for the flavour it's more for the appearance. So there you go, char siu pork or Chinese barbecue pork as it's sometimes called. Absolutely delicious, really easy to do. Can be served on its own as a side dish with some salad or some steamed vegetables or used in many, many dishes, which is what we're actually going to do with the char siu pork that we've just produced. Please subscribe to the channel and as usual, if you've enjoyed this particular video, hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.